Hello my friends, it's been a while and I apologize once again. Now seems like a common theme running through my last videos. I can only thank you for your patience and support. It's been a couple of years of pretty tumultuous changes and I've had concerns with health, family, work and so on. Hey, let's leave that aside and get right into today's review. Now it's an exciting one for me because once again, it's a Finnish resin kit from the Dan's Dinosaurs line, the Ankylosaurus. Now, like the Dan's Diabloceratops, this was sculpted by Sean Cooper and also finished by Martin Garrett. Now, the expected quality, therefore, almost goes without saying. Now, the Ankylosaurus were divided into two families, the Ankylosauridae and the uh, Nodosauridae. The Nodosaurids, of which the happiest example in my collection is my sideshow Gastonia, uh, were characterized by dangerous shoulder spikes. They, however, lack tail clubs. The Ankylosaurid and Ankylosaurus, on the other hand, were the ones with that tail club. Now, Ankylosaurus was probably the largest ever Ankylosaur, although size estimates have varied over the years. Now, this sculpture is about 29 centimeters or about 11.5 inches. Now, if we use an estimated 8 to 10 meters in the Arbor 2017 paper, this scales about 1 to 28 to 1 to 34. So most figures, there's usually one thing that just grabs you. And for me, for Ankylosaurus, it's proportion. Now, you may not care about length, but depending on your orientation, girth is mighty important. Now, that's because this was a really wide animal, and that's not often captured well in so many mass-produced figures. Now, the most egregious example of this is the Papo Ankylosaurus. Now, from certain angles, it looks okay, but when you look at it square on, it almost disappears on you. Now I hunted for my own Peppo to show you on camera, but then I remembered too late that in my disappointment, I couldn't give it away fast enough, so I no longer have it. Now another example is the Carnegie 2004 model. Now again, from the side, it looks pretty good, but dorsally, again, it looks too narrow. Now in this case, however, Carnegie probably referenced the Carpenter 2004 paper, uh, which does have a pretty narrow build too. Now another mass production model was the Wild Safari 2008. And this one is interesting, it looks like it got the girth right, uh, which is not something I can say for many of the other models on the market, but unfortunately the head somehow just seems to be a little too big, especially when viewed from the side. Which brings me to this. Now, Dan's version looks just right to me, and I couldn't be happier. Now, the head to body proportion is great, and the immense width of the animal is captured beautifully. And you get an idea, you know, of really how low CG these animals were. And I think it's a lucky predator indeed. Uh, that could flip this mother over to get at that belly. Ironically, Ankylosaurus is actually rather poorly known. Now, much of what you'll see actually borrows from better known Ankylosaurs, such as Euplocephalus and Anodontosaurus. And in fact, from the remains that we do have, Ankylosaurus was pretty atypical of the group it gave its name to. And that's pretty interesting. It reminds me a bit of how Stegosaurus isn't really typical of Stegosaurus. And with that in mind, let's look at some details. Now, starting at the head, you'll see the typical capitigule. And someone can correct my pronunciation because it's certainly not in the dictionary. The cranial ornamentation you see in Ankylosaurids. Now, these aren't just surface osteoderms, however, uh, because they're actually present in more or less the same place across different individuals. So they likely correspond to specific cranial structures that lie beneath. And an interesting thing about the nostril position. Now, unusually, they don't face the front. Now, if you look at this diagram here, you see those bones marked in blue. Well, in other ankylosaurs, the nostrils are actually below them. But in ankylosaurus, it's behind. 
So perhaps this was an adaptation to support foraging or rooting behavior. Uh, you don't want to have a nose full of soil. <laughs> and in fact, um, you can't really see them from the front. And I think this is very, very nicely captured here. Nostrils are set somewhat, somewhat behind. Um, looks to me they point ventral laterally, I could be wrong, but that is the correct uh, orientation they should be in. And from the front, you can't see them at all. Now, armor is always going to be open to interpretation, unless we're lucky enough to find uh, something like Borealo Pelter. For example, cervical half rings, uh, which are yolk-shaped bands that underlie the cervical osteoderms, well, Haber suggests that there were actually two of these in Ankylosaurus, uh, with six osteoderms each. That's not featured here. What this does have, however, are mandibular osteoderms projecting out from the sides of the mandible. And I thought that this was a really um, interesting decision, a very interesting idea. Now, the evolution of armor patterns is interesting to follow. Uh, for example, Brown in 1908 had no tail club and tightly spaced osteoderms throughout the back. And those osteoderms, uh, if you notice, are pretty much uniform. Uh, he thought that the cervical half rings were actually remnants from the pelvic region. And Ford in 2003 had a polar canthus like pelvic shield. A carpenter the following year was a lot narrower. And the Arbor paper in 2017 reintroduced the cervical half rings. Now, again, Dan's dinosaurs doesn't have those half rings, but the osteoderm positions are pretty much in line with the literature. And of course, I'm a layman, so please correct me on this if I'm wrong. But as to the osteoderms themselves, now you'll see that they are very lifelike. Um, they have a very lived-in look. This looks like real tissue. You'll see cracks and striations, and, and um, there are actually keels on many of the larger ones. Uh, probably better seen on the side. So look at that amount of detail. And it actually looks so real. It's really reminiscent of uh, what I saw on my sideshow Gastonia, actually. Now, in between these osteoderms, you'll see a mosaic of pebble-like ossicles. And even here, um, you can see that they didn't take the easy route uh, by making them all uniform. Uh, there's a variability to. There are, you, you'll see some creases across uh, in some of these areas. And um, that's suggestive of some degree of mobility rather than a completely rigid carapace. And in life, these osteoderms uh, vary in shape and length from about 1 cm to uh, about 35 cm. And you'll see this non-uniformity depicted here too. Uh, for instance, you can see these are shaped very differently as they go down. The largest, of course, are these two, uh, um, these two, these two on the shoulder. And then they start to taper off towards the tail. And not just in size, but also in uh, their regional differences in their shape. So, for example, down the flanks here, you'll see... Uh, I hope this captures nicely on the video. But you'll see that um, there are trapezoidal ones going down the flanks here. And here too. Uh, whereas down here in the tail, they take on a more triangular shape, uh, which are sharper. Uh, there are even some down here on the shoulder area. So while certainly not of the same size as uh, the notosaurids, nodosaurids, uh, it's still pretty respectable. And so it tapers down to the tail. Now speaking of the tail, this leads me to the business end of this animal. Now, this model captures not just the massive nature of this weapon, but also the bony essence of it. Now, you see two large uh, bone masses and two small ones here, and they all fuse together at the tip. And you'll also see uh, the stiffening 
uh, that occurs over the last few vertebrae here, forming the handle of the club. Uh, no fancy colours, no eye spots, just one in your face huge boner that says if you mess with me when I'm minding my own business, somebody gonna get the hurt real bad. Now as I said, Ankylosaurus is relatively poorly known, so the pelvis, the tail and even the feet are often based on uh, what we know of other advanced ankylosaurs. Um, you know, in the base of that, the limbs do look right to me, uh, with three toes on the hind limbs here, and five on the forelimbs. At least, look, it looks like five with a very reduced fifth digit over here. Now, we do know the hind limbs were longer, so actually, this downward sloping prof profile is a very plausible look. And now finally we come to an unexpected delight <laughs> for me and that's actually the fat belly of Ankylosaurus. Now when you look at dinosaurs depicted in profile, it's hard to appreciate the true form of the animal. Now most herbivores tend to be reconstructed with a slim waisted profile. In fact, most of them would have had big bellies because they were essentially fermentation chambers and Ankylosaurus with its additional width would have had one big gut. In fact, the specific name of Ankylosaurus is Magna Ventris. Uh, magna meaning big and Ventris, um, the ventral side or the belly. So big belly. And here you get a paunch to be truly proud of, a real vet of guts. Now it doesn't have a mosaic uh, of tessellating scales, uh, much uh, unlike the some other models like uh, like the wild safari but what it does have is something that looks generally unarmored now there are hints of scalation here and there as you can see but generally um, the whole thing gives me a feel of being very soft um, and unprotected and that's a fact that's made so real by the presence of these skin creases and also what looks to me to be veins. And you can see that the poor animal was unarmored in the throat area too. And um, for some reason, you know, the, the contrast between what's on the ventral side uh, compared to what you can see dorsally, um, it's, it's nice. It gives a sense of soft vulnerability to this otherwise awesome, uh, unsympathetic animal. So finally, we talk about the colour and the work by Martin Garrett once again doesn't disappoint. So one of the fun aspects of ordering a built-up model is the chance to have some input into the final result. And since I know absolutely nothing about painting, I can still colour the animal vicariously through Martin's good efforts. Now, once again, you will not see the single layer application that you'll see on so many mass-produced models. Um, even in what seem to be monochromatic areas, you'll notice, uh, if you look at this in person, a lot of layering going on. And you know, that's what uh, 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 an artist really does. Uh, it, it build, he builds up layers, and those layers um, or those repeated layers, one on top of the other, creates a very organic look. Um, if you look here, for example, you look at the mottling that goes on here in the thighs, the flanks, um, the neck here, and I just want to show off this side as well. I mean, you can see, look at the way this, this fades into the belly. Um, you know, you, you can really see that um, there's a kind of translucency that suggests living pigmentation under the skin. And as for the main attractions of Ankylosaurus, the osteoderms and the tail clubs, well, you can just, uh, we'll just take one example, you can see how real this looks. Like bone with some keratinization. Uh, you'll see here on the wild safari, which I want to emphasize really does look good by itself. Um, the bony parts um, have, have they, they have this solid color application and 
you know, it just doesn't look real somehow. And it really doesn't do this scalp justice. And I feel that um, this is really a very good example of how important the color, that the paint work really is. Now, one area that's often overlooked are the eyes. Um, can't tell you how many times a model looked pretty good, but had eyes that were sloppily painted, not painted, and most commonly, not pointing the same way. Now, I've got many cross-eyed specimens in my collection. Uh, you can see here that this wasn't very easy to paint, but Martin did it. So finally, let's talk about the base. Now, what Martin's done here is essentially landscaped what was a simple platform. Now, I mean, just look at it. Um, you know, it even makes me wish I knew more about plants so I could appreciate all these different species even more. Now, you've got enough variety in here to make this whole scene look incredibly naturalistic. This is exquisite and intricate work. You know, there's, there's moss uh, and soil, uh, you know, uh, bits of maybe upturned root, shrubs, rocks, just incredible work. And as a bonus, here's a little pool from which the Ankylosaurus is drinking. Now, it's another example of how something that just builds on what's already good and then elevates it further, if possible. Now, uh, this isn't just a solid watercolour, uh, as you've seen in some of the McFarlane dragons I've reviewed, but it's got a transparency that allows you to see uh, almost to the bottom. So basically then, everything comes together um, in an amazingly beautiful way to create a really nice diorama of a dangerous yet peaceful animal going about its daily life minding its own business. So there we have it, the dance dinosaurs line Ankylosaurus. Now this is a line that's really delivered on quality and accuracy at a reasonable price. And even the fully finished model by Martin is affordable. And um, I would suggest that if you uh, don't do any of the paint work yourself, it's worthwhile getting one of these uh, and get the finished version by Martin you'll be able to enjoy having a bit of input into how your figure looks like. Um, at the end of it, you can be assured that you've got something really worthy of being in your collection. And um, man, I can't wait to see what Dan adds to his line next. I'm hoping it's a stegosaurian of some sort. So that's it for now. Uh, now I've said this many, many, many times before that I'll try to be more regular again. Um, and I know it's starting to sound like a boy who cried wolf, uh, but I will say this, I already have my next dinosaur lined up for review, and that one is going to be stunning. So I'll see you sooner than you might have come to expect from me. Thanks guys.